welcome back to my channel. This is Tita Lavinia of Titas of Pageantry. And for this episode, let's get to talk about Chesley Christ and the impact she left in the community. So please make sure to stick around. Please subscribe to the channel as well as hit that bell notification button for your weekly pageant fix. Hey guys, long time no see, but I hope that you're doing well despite the challenges. So yesterday was Chinese New Year. Happy Chinese New Year to you. And I hope that we can rest easy this year and I hope that we all become rather prosperous because, yeah, why not? Um, I know I've been MIA for quite some time. I've been taking a lot of breaks lately because I think that this has been... Um, or at least January has been rather kind to vloggers like us because if you want to be in the loop, of course, you can create all of your contents. But if you want to take a break, now is actually a great time to take a break because there's really nothing going on around. Now, there were supposed to be events lined up for January, but those had to be put on hold because of the rising cases of COVID. So I think most of the contents that are out there for the whole of January were speculative. Um, we speculated on who might join the Nationals this year, and we discussed you know, fresh faces as well as seasoned pageant veterans who we might see this year. But I didn't want to continue feeding you contents based on speculations. I wanted the usual contents wherein you would do your research, open up a discussion, and maybe, you know, base it on some real or really concrete information. And we didn't have that all throughout January, really, because there were no movements from the um, local organizations here in the country. But February, um, we have more updates coming from Binibining Pilipinas as well as Miss Universe Philippines. So if we were in a lull um, around January, then things might just pick up this month. And I think that in the next couple of weeks, we will be a lot busier, but we will definitely be super busy around um, summer as Binibini as well as Miss Universe Philippines seem to have activities lined up for us this coming summer. One of the main reasons was why I am deviating from the regular pageant talk is because I feel that this is an important discussion for us. And I was monitoring what was going on on YouTube. It seems that most of the vloggers from pageantry out there, when they learned the news of Chesley Christ's um, passing, they did their own, um, you know, tributes, uh, chopping up videos, doing video collages. So I didn't want to just dwell on that. I could have, honestly, but <clears throat> I wanted us to have a discussion because I think what happened to Chesley really opened our eyes, um, really made us ask questions and you know really allowed us to be more in touch with our feelings allowed us to be more vocal even if you know we're just being vocal towards someone we absolutely have never met before and i think that this is just really important to open up this platform by the time i publish this video to just check up on each other as this has become a common trend these past couple of days and i am of course referring to the um, impact that Chesley left um, when she passed on because what happened to her made us realize that everybody around us, even those that we don't get to see in person, we don't know what's going on with them. We don't know whether checking up on them is just enough to save them from whatever dark thoughts they have um, you know, looming over their heads. So I think that this is a really great time to just be out in the open with you know what other things we're not discussing because I think that what happened to Chesley is also a wake-up call for us to not just be mindful with you know friends family or even acquaintances who you know seem to be wallowing in the darkness but to also check up on those people who have been very dependable who have been functioning normally so um of course just to give you a little bit of an idea and Anyway, this is already out in the open and it's already on social media and news outlets everywhere. Chesley Christ was a former Miss USA. She was Miss USA uh, 2019. She competed at Miss Universe in 2019, finishing top, um, top 10. Now, what's interesting about Chesley is that she... Is a, uh, she was a lawyer when she competed. She was a practicing lawyer when she competed. And then... Um, Within the middle of her reign at Miss USA, she was also tapped to host at Extra. And we got to see more of her um, when she would do like side gigs for Miss Universe. So Chesley functioned like a normal 
individual. She was accomplished. She was really driven, and she was at her prime. Um, even if she was no longer competing in pageantry, we still got to see a lot of her because she did so well with the hosting. And I think that um, her last appearance at Miss Universe was pretty much like a stepping stone of what we can see from her in the next couple of years. I mean, she was positioned to be a staple, someone that... Um, you know, we all look forward to the same way we look forward to Jeannie Mai every year at Miss Universe. She was already positioned that way. So I think this really hit us closer to home because Chesley had so many interactions with Filipino personalities. And of course, as Filipinos by association, we feel a piece of that. She was at one point a roommate of Kat. She competed, of course, against Gazzini, and I'm sure they had like interactions with each other as well. And then um, not too long ago, we saw her stellar performance as an anchor at Miss Universe. And I think one of the highlights when it comes to at least her pageant journey, as well as her wardrobe, was when she wore the canary yellow ball gown by Michael Cinco um, when she passed on her crown to the next Miss USA. So I think that because of a little bit of that Filipino connection, we feel more about what happened. Death has become rather commonplace in the age of this pandemic. I'm not saying it doesn't shock us because I think that anything related to death, whether it's an accident or um, an illness, it still shocks you to the core. And of course, when you add in the factor of COVID, um, for someone who had COVID, uh, you know, a few months back, I understand that very prayer of asking God at least, you know, another chance or for asking um, for a longer life. And I think that this is really difficult for us to swallow as members of the pageant community, as human beings, because at around the time that you're just really scrambling to extend your life and, you know, survive, you have someone who just seems to have everything. And in just one go, in just one decision, she lets everything go. And the manner of her exit was just so violent and just so uncharacteristic that this really shook us to the core. And I'm already noticing that the impact that she left with her death wasn't just felt in um, the pageant community. I'm already seeing other write-ups um, in other industries as well. And people are already talking about her um, because of that. So because I was also trying to make sense of it all, I read through various articles. Um, I wanted to really know what was happening because her character is just so different from how she ended up. I mean, she was in control. She seemed really bubbly. She had great personality, big hair, um, lots to say, uh, great communication skills. So I, I suppose something was really amiss. And I found out that she wrote an article for Glamour magazine not too long ago about turning 30. And I wanted to understand more of her mindset. And when I was reading through the article and there were parts that were lifted from um, the essay that she wrote and I don't know, there was a, you know, that impact, especially because I'm also a lot older and I felt that what she was thinking and what she was going through, um, her thoughts about growing old, turning 30, working nonstop, um, I thought that these were also the same things that I had in my head. And these were also the same concerns that I eventually didn't even, you know, think about anymore. But I, I really felt where she was in terms of her headspace. It seemed that she looked really put together, but it seemed that she also had a lot of struggles in her head. And there was a lot of fear um, in that essay. There was a lot of concern about growing old and about following a timeline. And I think that this is really common, especially for people like me who are still single, who, you know, have partners who are still single. Or And I know this because, like what I mentioned in the Titas of Pageantry post not too long ago, I know this because whenever it gets a little heated on social media, let's say during pageant season, if you have either the Indonesian trolls or maybe the Filipino trolls, 
you know, one of the more common things that they would say about me is, of course, about my age, of course, about not being married. I think I heard one rumor saying that I'm not married because I'm actually the mistress of my current boyfriend, which, of course, isn't true. But, I mean, these things pile up. And I think one of the nastiest rumors that was said about me um, because of that age factor was that I... um, can't conceive children. And I hardly respond to these because it's not about that. It's really a choice. But even so, saying that it's a choice not to have children at this age will, you know, just open a can of worms. So I've always been very mum about it. So what I'm just saying is that I felt for Chesley when she wrote that piece. And I don't know if these thoughts lingered in her head when she decided to do what she did. But um I think these are all the thoughts that just piled up and these are all the mental things that she had to deal with. Um, You know, what happened to Chesley? um, I think this is really a grim reminder of how social media functions. I definitely understand how cringy it is for an individual to put everything out there just because he or she is transparent. It does border on being cringy when everything is out in the open, when all of your feelings are documented from the time you wake up to the time that you put on your pajamas. But what I'm just saying is that I also understand how individuals would control contents that they would release out there. And I think what happened to Chesley is really a wake-up call because we have no idea which of the people in our group needs help because of this. The pandemic isn't helping either. I mean, although some places in the world may look normal, um, there's always that thought of being wiped out in just one go. And, you know, these are the things that may contribute to certain degrees of depression. And, you know, it's an illness. It's, It's something that's just so invisible, but something that could be felt. And, It's like a drug. You don't even know how to act upon it. Sleep on it, eat, stay quiet, or like Chesley, function effectively. And I think that this was best described by her mother, who um, recently made uh, a statement. And in the statement, she wrote, I have never known a pain as deep as this. I am forever changed. Today, what our family and friends privately knew was the cause of death of my sweet baby girl, Chesley, was officially confirmed. While it may be hard to believe, it's true. Chesley led both a public and private life. In her private life, she was dealing with high-functioning depression, which she hid from everyone, including me, her closest confidant, until very shortly before her death. So, I think it's safe to assume that what happened to Chesley and just how unbelievable um, her ending was is just if there is a little bit of that silver lining, it's that it's opening up more conversation. It's opening up more questions, more doors to talk about high functioning depression. I mean, we had no idea that there was such a thing as high functioning depression. And I think that this is even more difficult for us as we navigate destigmatizing mental health and mental health issues only because, you know, Chesley was really involved in mental health awareness. She talked extensively about this and she seemed to have everything under control um, whenever she would go into, um, you know, depressive bouts. And she was very open about this. She shared um, her thoughts about being depressed and mental health um, in public. So she was surrounded by people who could help her. She had programs um, that, I mean, there were programs that she had access with, um, even organizations as well as institutions who could actually help her. But none of them were enough to save her from the darkness, which meant that unfortunately, this was really something that she seriously thought about. This wasn't at least for me, I'm not an expert, this wasn't a spur-of-the-moment decision. So it's sad that she had to go this way, but at least now we have red flags to watch out for, something that you know just weren't readily available for us before. So I'm wrapping this one up. I know that this isn't pageant-related, but in pageantry, mental fortitude is really very important. And apart from this, 
I wish there was a way for me to make a huge business out of my um, relationship with social media. <laughs> Not to lift my own share, but I think that I have a pretty healthy relationship with social media. That it's easy for me to step away once it gets too heated. That it's easy for me to navigate without getting hurt because there's a bit of distance that I maintain with social media. I don't go too deep into it. I use its function to make me happy, to look at beautiful pictures, to look at funny videos, and nothing more. That's why I don't engage in political conversations on social media. That's why I stay within my level of expertise, which is somewhat, you know, about pageantry. But I hardly veer away from those things. And I only, you know, check on things that make me happy, like jewelry and pets and animals and, you know, gemstones and perfumes and architecture so i don't know if this will help um again i'm not an expert but i have been making a career out of social media for quite some time and if it helps um yeah try to maintain a healthy relationship with social media um, i think now it's okay to open up it's okay to be more in touch with our feelings i mean before that was a sign of being weak that was a sign of you know airing out dirty laundry in public but if these are ways to decompress if these are ways for you to feel better then yeah go for it and i hope that you regularly check up on yourself before you check up on other people self-love you guys um you know, try to assess, are you okay? And, you know, be open with it. If you're not okay, um, you will be the first one to know what's going to make you feel better. If that doesn't work, seek help if it's available or talk to someone. So on this note, guys, I'll see you very soon. I'm going to try and be less lazy in the next couple of days, but I have new equipment. I colored my hair. Thank you so much, Iconic Star Hair Extensions, for... Um, this fresh new look. Thank you as well to Vanilla Skin for maintaining this space, even if yeah, we're all pretty down and somber lately. So on this note, guys, do take care. Um, physically, emotionally, mentally, please take care and yeah, look out for each other. Thanks, guys. See you soon. Bye.